Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So this is a tutorial on how to make these journals from junk mail envelopes, envelopes with the windows. So um, this will be a detailed tutorial. I have all of my steps ready to go. Um, everything will be time stamped down below. So if you need to jump from section to section, you can do that. Or if you need to come back to the video, you can do that. I filmed the video over a number of different uh, number of days, so there will be some differences in lighting. Just let, letting you know, we will be creating this journal together. Um, now I'm just going to show you inside. If you you know if you want to uh, make a decision whether you want to be making this journal with me, so um, this is our closure here. It can be closed this way, or as the journal is getting uh, a little bit chunkier, then you can close it this way or, you know, whichever way you prefer. So there's an option to have it two different ways. Um, okay, so we also have a little tag here that slides in and out. Um, and the tag is corresponding with the scrapbook paper on the inside. Um, there's also a little tassel that's hanging at the edge here. We do all of this together. Um, also on the inside you will see that there's a number of different pages and different types of pages. Grungy looking pages and you know just some fun little bits and pieces. We will do everything together as I said. I'll also show you how to do this middle part here. We do a little booklet together. All, all sorts of fun little goodies in here. So um, our first step is to get started and prepare our envelope for the cover. So um, these are our steps. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to move these here so that you can still see. And then hopefully this will give me enough space. All right, so you've got your envelope. This is what it looks like. You've got your little window. You want one that has a little bit of space up the top here. So um, I'll just quickly show you. You can see this envelope. It doesn't have a lot of space here. Um, that only matters if you know you want to have space to put your tag in. So I've chosen this envelope. There's quite a bit of space up the top, so that's really good. Okay, so now I just want to open it on the side so you can just trim it down with the trimmer depending on what size envelope or what size journal you want. Um, so I like this size and that's why I'm just going to cut it open here on both ends. I'll try not to rush because the more I rush the slower I go it seems. So. We have cut the envelope to size and now I want to start adding elements. So the first thing that I'm going to actually, before I do that, I actually do want to trim it down a little bit more. I want it a little bit more narrow. So I want it to be the same as my journals that I've already made. So I'm just going to trim it down here. I need a bigger. Here we go want to make sure that it's straight okay move everything out of the way all right okay so we've cut it to size and now I'm going to start adding um, I want to cover all of these and I don't want that showing through my envelope so I'm just going to this is where you can uh, get as creative as you wish like even that would look quite nice so whatever you've got you can start gluing it down so like for example I don't even worry about it being um, the right size up the writing so then like I would do something like And then at the ends, at the ends here, you can just glue it down. It doesn't have to be within the envelope because then you'll be cutting it out anyway um, from the other side once everything is dry. So 
they will just be something like that and then I want one here so just look at your placement so now everything's covered I'm just sort of checking where I will put everything and then maybe one there and then one here okay so that that looks good to me so now I'm going to start gluing it down I'll just show you how I do the first few and then I'll um, finish the rest off camera so this is my mixture of PVA glue with some water and then I just grab uh, let's see grab this one I'm a little bit off camera here but here we go and then I'll just glue it down okay I'll do the rest without talking and then I'll just speed it up okay so the next thing I'm going to do I've just decided to use book pages for this one um, so the next thing I'm going to do is maybe some doodling so let's say for example I'll just use my pencil and I'll just uh, this isn't really doodling is it but you know just making some marks here and there So you can see how um, crap it looks right now and how good it will look when it's done. So just, you know, playing around. You can do whatever. If you can draw, I can't. But if you can, even better. So now what I would like to do is do some writing. So what I do is I don't actually... Um, I just pretend to write really it's not really real writing so I'll just show you for example this isn't my writing but it's supposed to be uh, it's supposed to look like it's writing but it's supposed to be uh, illegible writing so let's say for example today I went to the shops and bought ice cream for example this is just or you can just doesn't even have to be words it can just be like so that it looks like you're actually writing something but it's see what I mean like the bottom one I didn't actually write anything it was just pretend pretend writing so I'm using a sharpie pen this one seems to be on its way out but I wanted to use a sharpie because I know once I'm adding more glue and water on top it's not going to um, blur and smudge and, and all of that so let's begin Okay, so that's all I think I'm going to do for writing. So I didn't actually write anything. Um, it's not it's not words. It's just scribbles. But you know, this is a, a good sort of time, perhaps, to write messages to yourself or, or uplifting messages or something like this. So you know that it's there. You know, um, so you can use your imagination with what you want to do with this step. Now the next thing I want to do is I just want to add a little bit of color. So I think I'm going to just add a little bit of brown or like a light, light brown. Let's see. So let's 
so I'm just gonna oh that's not brown is it Okay, so this is now done. I've added my color. I'm just going to let this dry a little bit and then I'll come back and maybe add a few more things and then we'll do the napkin. So I just wanted to show you in my completed journal some of the things that I've done. So you will see on this one, you can see that I've got the book pages, I've got the doodling, uh, the, um, what do you call it? Just making marks, I guess around the book pages then I've got stamps you will see postage stamps here so I think that's all I did on this one I did postage stamps I did book page and I did just some making marks here's a little postage stamp here so they're just underneath layers um, poking through on this one you will see I've got book pages I've got a uh, music sheets I've got some writing and I've, I've uh, also done some mark making around the book pages that sort of thing there's a music sheet down here and then on this one I've got music sheets I've got some writing I've got book pages some mark making um, I didn't use any stamps because um, this the ink that I've got it's not waterproof so once I go over it with my glue and water solution it would have smudged so that's why I did no stamps you can see here I did some mark making I did some circles I did some like little crosses or you know just just doodling a little bit I, I did like a little signature down here and down here just some scribbles here and there you can see some color poking through some watercolor and then on this one because it's quite um quite a busy napkin I guess but you can still see underneath I've got mu music sheet here I've got some scribbling book pages mark making so that's sort of what it looks like so anything you do will still be fine because most of it is covered and there's just a tiny little bit poking through okay so this is nearly dry um, I just wanted to add about the writing the reason why I'm I, no, I wasn't writing actual words because I find that when I'm writing really quickly I can make nicer scribbles than when I if, than if I was writing real words uh, you might want to write real words that people can read or that you can see poking through for some reason I just wanted it to be in the background I didn't want it to um, be something that you can actually read because once like for example here you can see there's some writing there but you can't actually read it so that's why I wanted it to be um, just scribbles that look like writing so let's say for example you want to write yesterday I went outside let's just say so if I just pretend right like yesterday I went outside so that's what that looks like but if I actually wanted to write quickly the same but legibly this is what it would look like yesterday I went outside so there's a bit of a difference like I think for this purpose this is not how I actually write but I wanted to I wanted it to look like scribbles so I actually like this one where I'm pretending to write the sentence so um that's yeah it's up to you really what you want to do but that's just my thought process um okay so i'm just going to talk about the napkins now and then we're going to go ahead and, and glue it down so um when you're choosing your napkin like this one for example is very um dark so if i was to use this napkin it, it none of this stuff that i've done underneath will, would actually show so that's um, something that you can do if you want to skip you know these layers all together so that's up to you depending on what napkins you've got um, the second one I wanted to talk about is like for example this one it's really beautiful however when I when I open it um, the lot the upper portion of the napkin will be upside down 
So because I want to use a whole piece, I don't want to be sort of tearing and cutting. That's what you can do if you want to. But because I want to use a full piece, I had to look at what I, what's actually on my napkin. And I didn't want it to be, um, you know, upside down in one portion. So this is the one I'm actually going to use. And you will see when I open it, there's no right way up. So it's all, you know, um, all the same, I guess. So... I will remove the, oh, sorry, I will remove this, um, the, I will just need the very top layer. So I just want to, oh yes, it's worked. I've only recently um, learned this step of using sticky tape to remove. Okay, so you want to remove this. The layers, is this it? I think this is it. Yeah. You want to remove this extra layer. I don't have to worry about all of it because I won't be using the whole thing. I can just use this portion, so I won't bother with that. I used to keep all of this too, um, but I've decided it's time to start throwing these out because I have so much, I have no space left. So that goes in the bin. Okay, so the napkin is ready. Uh, it's just the top, the very top. I think that's it. Yes, so you just want that one layer, one thin layer, the top layer. So that's ready to go. But before I uh, actually glue it down, I just want to make sure that all of these little pieces that are sticking up, I want to glue it down. I want to make sure everything's down. And I also want to, I'm just going to trim this with my scissors and... So I'm going to do that now and then I'll come back and we'll do the napkin. Okay, I'm ready to glue my napkin, but I just wanted to add just a little bit more. Just a little bit more something, I guess. Oh, I didn't glue this down. So let me just glue this one down. Okay, that will do. So before gluing your napkin, you might want to double check if you want to add anything more. I think, you know, I'm happy with this, I think. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. We're, do we're doing step three, covering with the napkin. So you want to have some sort of a, sorry about the noise. You want to have some sort of non-stick surface underneath because you don't want the extra of the uh, tissue paper or napkin to stick onto your surface. So um, I'm just using a cereal box um, bag. All right, and then I am now going to cover the whole thing with PVA glue, um, my mixture of PVA glue and water. So, and that's going to uh, wrinkle up my envelope quite a lot, but that all tends to um settle down once we do everything so once we add the inside once we finish the cover basically so now i'm just making sure that everything is nicely covered with glue want to make sure it's everywhere if it goes onto your window I mean, it will go onto your window because you want to make sure that the glue is everywhere. Um, and then we can just clean up the window after, as you will see. Okay, so my glue is everywhere. I'm just going to turn this around. Just so I don't have all that extra glue. Okay, and now... It's time to put our napkin on top. So we are just carefully going to put our napkin down. So you can see these creases here. I don't like to be um, to see those creases. So I just want to make sure that as I'm gluing it, I'm straightening the creases out and then these straight creases because there will be creases and I want little creases like these ones here that uh, hopefully you can see but I don't want these straight creases so now we are just going to 
make sure everything is glued down. Be careful uh, in this step. The napkin that I'm using is not very uh, thin and flimsy. So if yours is really, really, really fragile, you really have to be quite careful when you're doing this step. And you want to make sure everything is glued down. So make sure your edges are nice and uh, there's quite a bit of glue everywhere. And where, be careful where you if you've got your hand somewhere on the, on the uh, wet napkin, be careful when you're lifting your hand off that you don't rip the napkin. Even if you do, if you make a mistake and, you, and there's a rip, you can just add extra on top. So that's all fine. Any mistake, there's no, there are no mistakes. <laughs> Not in this world anyway. So now I'm just making sure there are no bubbles. You don't want to see any bubbles. Everything has to be glued down. And I'm quite happy with that. As you will notice, I, I went right over the window. So I'm going to, in this next step, you will see how I removed the, um, the napkin from the window. If anyone's got a suggestion or perhaps an easier way of doing this, please let me know. This is how I did it. So I just want to rip somewhere in the middle. And then carefully remove the excess. Okay, so I've removed most of it and now I'm just going to go in very gently and um, just to see what I can do with the edges. I want all of the tissue paper or napkin to be completely off the window. So this is the reason you'll see these little bits here. This is the reason why on my completed journals I've added the lace because it hides that, I mean, not that it matters really, but it hides that um, not so perfect edge. So now that I've done that, I think I'm quite happy with that. I just want to make sure that we've got enough glue. I just want to flatten everything down. Make sure it's, it's off the window. And now before I do anything else, I want to remove the glue from the window. Just very carefully remove. I don't know if you leave the glue on, if it would just come off later when it's dry. I'm not sure what would happen because I didn't leave it. I, I removed it straight away. Okay, so now I've removed my glue and I will let this dry, but I um, I cut off the excess before I let it dry. Um, I don't know that this is something that you have to do, but I have done it just so that. Okay, so I I know some of you are going to hate this, but I'm actually throwing this out. I made a pact. I have to start throwing things out because. I just have so much. Okay, so here we go. I've just um, made a mistake. So I'll show you how to fix it. I've ripped, you can see that some of it has come off. It's no big deal. It really isn't, but I'm going to fix it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of um, tissue paper here and glue it back on. It's really no big deal. You won't even be able to see it once everything is done. So but I just want to make sure that that area is protected. And perhaps this straight edge here would give me away. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Oh my God, I just keep making mistakes. Which is probably a good thing so you guys can see what happens. But I've made five, five journals so far and I haven't had this happen. So it, 
everything happens for a reason so it's, it's supposed to happen so that you can see what I do so I've just covered it up and then you'll see it when it's done it's not going to make any difference so I'm just cutting off the excess I think um, the five that I've made um, that hasn't happened because I was being a lot more careful I guess with this step but I'm just trying to hurry up so that I'm not taking too much of your time and of course when you rush you make mistakes so I'll try and oh, slow down a bit okay so that's fine so now I just want to just double check that everything is glued so these edges I want it to really be uh, to really be glued down completely there's my little boo-boo here because when I make journals I want them to last <laughs> so that's why I'm being really careful that there's no lifting and things especially if you're making a journal that you are selling or that you when you're making a journal that you will be carrying around with you or that's supposed to last quite a while like in this step if you have tissue that's not glued down completely it will eventually you know it might catch on to something it might, it might start peeling off and then you're gonna hate it so that's why I'm just being extra uh, just making sure that everything's glued down so everything is glued down and now I'm just going to set this aside to dry so I actually like to remove it from this um, this uh, um, cereal box cover and I put it on another cereal box cover so I'm going to go do that I'm going to lay down flat somewhere to dry on, a, on another cereal box cover um, and then I will come back once this is dry and then we will go on to the next step all right see you soon okay so now my envelope is dry it's the evening which is why the light is different so okay so the next step we're going to do before we continue is i've already started trimming um, the excess so we want to trim the excess uh, of the uh, tissue or the napkin so let me just do that So that's all done I've chosen um, this scrapbook paper and this is what it looks like on this side so I think it will look okay so you want to check that it looks fine you know through the window and then you want it to sort of correspond on the inside and I think that's okay um, once everything is done everything just falls into place and I also wanted to show you this is exactly the same napkin that I used but you can see how it's totally different effect because of the here I've used different watercolors I've used like a greeny bluey watercolors and then here I was using like brown and there was a bit of purple and stuff mixed in there so completely different uh, you know all the color is coming through and it changes the whole feel of the journal okay so now before we glue it onto our scrapbook page um, you want to cut the slit above the window for your tag to go in in some of my journals I for, uh, in this one actually I forgot to cut the slit before I actually glued it onto the scrapbook page and then I had to cut it afterwards and I had to be really careful because I didn't want it to go all the way through to this side you want it you don't want it to go all, all the way through to that side so um, just remember to do it before you actually glue it down so I have marked already where I want to cut so it's just slightly above the window I don't want it too close and I don't want it to like all the way up here so slightly above and then slightly larger or than the window so just a little bit like not not too far away from it so now I'm going to use my utility knife and let me just quickly cut the slit and then we'll go on to gluing it onto our scrapbook paper I think that's about right so if I was to put my tag through 
Yeah, perfect. So I'm happy with that. Okay, now that's done. All right, so the way that I glue it on is quite simple. I use, um, just to be extra, I like to use a few different glues. So first I will do a glue stick. This is just a cheap school glue stick, nothing special. But I mainly want to concentrate, I guess, on the middle. Okay, and then I will cover the whole thing with my PVA mixture again. So as you may have noticed, I didn't actually um, cut uh, the scrapbook paper to size. I'm going to do that after everything is dry. So now I'm just covering it with my PVA mixture. PVA and water mixture, I should say. And you don't have to go all the way to the window because um, the plastic actually goes a little bit further out. It's all the way up to here. And this part is not going to glue anyway because of the plastic. So that's why you don't have to go all the way to the window. And you will see my paper, my envelope is getting quite wrinkly. But once all of our processor, processes are complete, it actually lays quite flat. Once everything is done and bound and all of that, it's, it lays quite flat. So you just want to concentrate on the edges, of course. Edges are probably the most important. Okay, so I think that will do. And now just to be on the safe side, I like to add a little bit of this. This is just like a tacky glue, it's clear, and it dries, it's a quick drying glue. So I just put a little bit of this glue on the edges because edges are quite important. And even though I'm going to sew, just to make sure that uh, nothing is going to start falling apart, um, you may choose not to sew, or may, you may not have a sewing machine. So in that case, you really want to make sure that your edges are stuck down. Okay, so that's all covered with glue. And now, I'm going to pop it straight onto my scrapbook paper, which I haven't cut the size, so that I don't have to worry about it being, you know, in perfect spot. So I will actually cut this once everything is dry. So just make sure. Okay, and then I sort of start from the middle out. And because everything is kind of wrinkled up, this takes a little bit of, you know, care. But you want to make sure that everything is flat down. So you can use a brayer or I like to use just a piece of cloth or like a, a dry um tissue paper or something like that like uh, uh, some sort of a fabric I guess just to glue it down and if there's any excess glue seeping out you can pick it up straight away and then I just focus on really trying to make sure that every single section is glued down completely take care you don't want to like when you're rubbing away, you don't want to sort of lift this part here. So just be careful. And I find for some reason, this section here is always the hardest to do. Okay, so I know that I've got glue everywhere, covering everything. If you notice a uh, little spots sort of being you know raising up a little bit maybe add a tiny little bit of glue in there it won't hurt okay i think that's looking pretty good 
so what I found is that if you now just leave it to dry like this because the paper wants to wrinkle up it might start um, coming up a little bit on some sections so to prevent that I actually cover it with my um, cereal box uh, liner and then I place something heavy oh, sorry I place something heavy on top and I let it dry overnight I guess you don't have to wait a whole night but I have or like if you do it in the morning then you can take it out in the evening I guess okay so I'm gonna let this dry and then we will come back um, to continue with the process uh, but before I start filming I will once it's dry I will just trim down the excess scrapbook papers okay so my uh, cover is dry completely everything is dry so the next step is to uh, do the sewing around but uh, just before I continue I just wanted to let you know with the slit here when you do the slit before you actually glue it on just make sure um, so you will see that the plastic part it actually comes up all the way up to here so you want to make sure that your slit is actually on the plastic part so that when you glue it down it's not glued down uh, because the plastic is not going to glue so that's why I don't sort of make it further like all the way up here that's why it's quite close to the window window just to make sure that it's not glued down when it's actually when I actually glue it down okay so now for the sewing part um, you will see that the journal is sewn around so I will sew off camera but I just wanted to tell you so if you can see the difference here for example in this uh, page here I've done a zigzag stitch but I've done it uh, both of the needle points are on the page whereas when I'm doing the cover the zigzag stitch I don't know the terminology so that's why I'm explaining it can you see how the thread goes around it's actually so that adds a little bit more protection to our cover um, and the way that I did that is I'm going to try to draw it so let's say for example this is my this is my edge of my cover so if I was to do a zigzag stitch uh, just on the edge so the needle will go through like this for example it will be punching on both uh, both the needle points will be going through the paper so then it looks like this it's a zigzag stitch the way that I do it on the cover is when the needle goes in on the left it goes onto the paper and then on the right it goes to the side of the paper so it goes back into the machine so um, I position the paper so that it's right in the middle where you know it goes in like uh, one goes here and then one to the side of the paper and then that way you get um, this effect so I'm sure there's a name um, a proper name for this process I guess or for this way of doing things but I don't know what it is because I'm not um, a pro in sewing so uh, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go and I'm going to do that off camera and then we will continue okay so I have finished sewing around and I've started on the lower on the back cover on the lower corner just so I don't have a knot here at the front so I just want to make sure that both of my that all of my strings are on the inside let me just do this one's on the outside oh, one's on the outside so I'm just going to tie a knot. I did back stitch. Oh, that wasn't a very good knot. I'll try again. I did back stitch a little bit, but I I want to tie a knot as well. Okay. There we go. And now just uh, I just want to trim okay here we go so that's done I've sewn all around that's done perfect all right so now just for the final touches we've got I've uh, finished the sewing I'm just going to add the closure some lace on the window and eyelets so 
Uh, the next thing I want to do is add a closure. So I'm using an elastic closure like this and it can close. I'll just show you. I, I have been having, uh, I've been closing them this way, but it can also, once it sort of, if it becomes quite uh, fat, then I can close it this way as well. So that's why I like this closure. I can close both ways, depending on what way you like. So I use a brad. I'm going to use this one, I think. I think that goes really nice. So now I've got my brad ready. It's just, this is just a brad from Kaiser Craft. Just to fix it up a little bit. Okay, so my brad is ready. I've got my elastic that I'm going to make the closure with. And this is about, I'm using about 23 inches. Um, so I gave myself enough. I, I want to have more rather than not enough. So I do have a little bit extra ready. Okay, so now I'm going to add some eyelets. I use my silent setter. You can use whatever you have, um, proper doll or whatever you have, but this is my new toy that I love playing with. Um, I've already marked a spot where I want to add a little eyelet. So it's about two centimeters from the edge. Make sure it's on the right side. So you want it where the window is. Two centimeters from the edge and I, I made sure that it's right in the middle. So I'm just going to punch a hole here with my eyelet setter. And now I'm going to use an eyelet. So I think this one will look good. Pop it in here. Okay. Okay, so my camera stopped filming for some strange reason. Um, so I've added an eyelet here and I have added an eyelet here up the top right hand corner. This is where I will have my tassel hanging from. So the reason why I like to add the eyelet is to, just to make sure that that uh, area is secure and strong. Um, because with, you know, the uh, constant opening and closing, I, I don't want it to you know get destroyed so that's just for extra reinforcement but you don't have to add an eyelet if you if you don't want to you can just punch a hole so now i'm just just pop this through and i want to see how much i need so i want it to be i don't want it to be too tight and i don't want it to be too loose so this this seems about right i think there's still there's obviously room to grow so i'm just going to tie a knot I'm going to do a square knot, so I'll do, where am I, left over right, and then right over left, and I'm not going to tighten it completely just yet. Okay, so there's my knot, it's not tight, and now I want to put my brad through, if I can. So this just takes a little bit of maneuvering, I guess. Um, let me see if I can do it this way. I think that's all right. And now I want to secure the ends of the knot. Maybe I'll tighten it up a little bit. And then I just want to secure, secure the uh, ed edges or ends with my pilot feet okay that's it so before I trim that just want to make sure yeah so that's slightly loose and I'm happy with that so once I bind the journal then I can tighten it up if I need to okay so that's my closure done and now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to add lace around the window so we'll do that next 
Okay, so I'm going to use this lace and I will just trim off all of my lengths and then I will glue everything down at the same time. So I just want to make sure that they're all the same and that they all meet properly. So I will do this for all four and then we'll glue. Okay, to glue the lace down, I'm going to use my quick drying glue, but for some of the envelopes, I also used uh, just a PVA glue, so that works fine too. I'm just going to use this one because it's quite quick drying. And I think I put a little bit too much. Okay, so I need to let this dry a little bit. So I wanted to make sure that everything is meeting in the corners uh, exactly and everything looks good. That needs to dry. Okay, so we have done the final steps for our cover. Our cover is now ready. Um, the charm, uh, the tassel, I'm going to do uh, once everything is bound and ready. So now the next thing we need to do is choose papers and assemble signatures. So let's go and do that. Okay, so for our papers, um, this is where you get creative with what you have at home and what sort of papers you feel like using in your journal. I just want to show you my completed journal um, and, and just so you can be inspired and see what sort of pages I've used. I have some tea dyed paper, some lined paper, some of this painty paper, which looks really cool. Um, my aim was to um, have this journal look really cool grungy and uneven pages and all that sort of stuff so you will see some really tiny small pages and some um, larger ones and you can see here I've used off cuts and things like that um, here I've got a little pocket and then here this is actually um, an image from a magazine it says if bees go we go too so that's why I liked that one um, also you if you want to use this um, this is an image from a book and I just can't, I just sort of um, on the other side I guess I line it with some tea dyed paper and then I sew it together so then you can have the image here and then you can have journaling placed there so that's the sort of papers that I used um, and then first step is choosing your papers I have 14 pages all together including these little ones because um, I don't want the I, I don't want it to be too full so I think usually per signature about you know you can go anywhere from 7 to 15 pages I guess um, you could probably do I could probably do even more but I just did 14 pages um, so I will go through my box this, these are some of my papers that I've got I've just chosen different sort of types of paper this is just some coffee spider paper when you look at it like this it's quite ugly but in a, in a grungy type of journal it looks really cool so um, I'm going to choose my papers and assemble them you know cut them down and whatnot and then I'll come back and then we will continue on with the process all right okay guys so I've got my um, all of the pages for my signature ready and as you will see this one here I left long um, because that will be I'll flip this in to make a pocket but I won't do that yet because I still need to trim down I want to see how much I need to trim down so when I put it in there's a little bit of pages sticking out so I'm just going to trim this down and then I will make this into a pocket just to make sure that everything all of my pages are aligned but before I do that I just wanted to show you how um, how I make this middle signature uh, this is uh, from a magazine 
and then on the inside I just line it with paper. So I just wanted to show you how I actually do that. And this is really cool to do in journals and to use up some really beautiful um, pages. But then you can still, you know, sometimes I get confused with what can I actually do with this other side, for example, you know. So anyway, let's keep going. So I actually have a template. I, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I made this in advance. So just how my signature, I want my signatures to be. So... Um, it's as you can probably see here it's only slightly shorter than the actual edge of my cover so my papers actually go up all the way nearly all the way to the edge of the cover so this is my template the only thing is this one I actually made a little bit too short so when I'm going to trim my pages down I'll make sure that I actually leave them a bit longer than this all right, but the template comes in handy when I want to trim this down. So I'm just going to, especially when it comes to height of the of the page. So I'm going to use the template to rip down the edges of the page to make sure they are correct size. And then other side. And then this way I know that everything will align. Okay, so that's about right. I just want to double check. I just want to, I need to trim this down too. So let me see. Because this is the this will be the middle of my signature, I don't want it to stick down, uh, stick out. Sorry. So I'm actually going to trim it down, flush with my template that's too short, because I need that middle page to be shorter than the rest so that it's not sticking out. So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay. So my page is now cut to size. And before I continue, I just want to double check. Yeah, I, I'm happy with that. I think that's about right. Just want to double check here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so the next thing I like to do... I am going to line it with this paper. So I just grab my um, glue stick. This is a really cheap glue stick. Nothing special. It's not going to hold. I don't actually expect it to hold, but I want it to hold while I'm actually sewing. So maybe I'll put it here in the middle. And then I just do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to go to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew around a zigzag stitch and then I'm going to rip off, uh, using my metal ruler again, I'm going to rip off the excess um, paper and then it will look like this. So you can see the stitching here. So it's not this type of stitching that we did on the cover, it's just just a zigzag stitch or you can do whatever stitch it doesn't have to be zigzag stitch so that's it I'm going to go and do that now then we'll come back and continue okay so that's all sewn and I'm just now um, ripping these edges so after we can I just wanted to show you how I sort of you know when I haven't got much paper to work with um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do that pocket and then we're going to do all of the necessary embellishing, pre-binding about embellishing. Okay, so that's the inside and now I just want to 
fold in the middle. Okay, what's the right side up? I think, okay, this is the right side up. Okay, so now, before we continue, what I want to do is I'm going to trim this to size, then I'm going to put my pocket in and then we're going to put this in. So, I marked uh, where I want to trim. I just made a little mark. Got my. I want to make sure that everything is flush with the spine. Okay. And now I'm just going to trim. Okay. Before we continue, let's check. Yep, perfect. I might have even trimmed it a little bit too short. It could have been longer. Okay, so now the real test. Let's see if this is sticking out. If it's sticking out, I will have to trim it. Oh, it's perfect. It is a little bit here, but I'm really I'm happy with that because it adds to the character. So I'm going to just leave that as it is. Even though I probably could trim a little bit, I've, I left myself a little bit of space next to the stitching, but I'm going to keep it as it is. So... Um, now for my the page that's going to be a pocket it's where's the middle so this is the not the middle page but this is the page next to the middle so I want my pocket to be I'm gonna use I hope I'm not confusing you guys so I'm just gonna do it and then it will make more sense as I do it I'm going to use this as a template It doesn't matter if um, the pocket is slightly shorter, but it will matter if it's longer. So, okay, so this is my pocket. I'm going to have it on the inside like this, just so it's matching all of my other journals. Okay. Perfect. And that's all of my papers for, um, for the journal are ready now so we've chosen the papers we've assembled the signature that's done it's ready to go the next thing i want to do is i want to do everything all of the embellishing that needs to be done before binding so um, i'm going to do some sewing some stamping some stenciling and uh, inking edges i don't ink all of the edges so i'm just going to show you here because i'll actually go and i'm going to do all of that off camera because you guys will probably do different things you'll use different stencils and you will use different stamps and and you might not sew and so i'll do it off camera but i'll just show you here i've done a little bit of sewing like a, some different little stitches here and there um this this stamp is actually not uh, it's added later after when we do embellishing here so i've got some stitching here and then i've got some stitching here and this is just the stencil that i've used um just to add a little bit of interest i've got a stamp here um what else did i do i've added a, so stenciling here inking edges here i mean you know some of these things of course you can do after but uh, i've stitched my pocket so you can see stitching there stitch my pocket this is already done stitching there inking edges and i think uh, there's a bit of stenciling there stamp sewing this is all now exactly the same as I did on, on, you know, the other side of the paper. So, for example, um, say, for example, this page, I'm going to take that page out wherever it is. Let's say this is it. Yeah, I think this is it. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to do on it what needs to be done. So I'll do some um, stenciling 
rather than doing it while it's in the paper in the band into the journal because then I have to do stenciling here then I have to find the other part then I have to do it here whereas if I do it all at once it's really quite quick and then the same for sewing so like for example my let's say my pocket here let me just pull it out I'm going to go to my to my machine and I'm just going to do a, a, a straight stitch down here put it back into the journal so um, I just find that it's much quicker to do it this way before we do any binding and especially I like to put it into a signature first just to make sure that uh, all the edges are even everything's ready to go and also because usually when I make journals I'll make a few of the same uh, journal at a time so then I will go I'll have all of my signatures laid out and then I'll go grab a first page of every signature and then I'll do some stitching so I know exactly what the process is and then they all kind of it's quick I don't have to do as much thinking I guess I just do the thinking for the first one so I'm going to go and do my pre-binding embellishing and then when uh, when we're ready when that's all done I'm, I'll come back and then we'll do the binding Okay, so that's all done. I have sewn, I have stenciled, I've stamped some, um, not too much, only um, a little bit, minimal. Okay, so the next step is binding. Um, let's do the binding. So I'm going to do just a simple pamphlet stitch binding. Um, and the closure, will, uh, the knot will be on the inside. You can have it on the outside and you can have some beads coming you know attached to it but I'll do mine on the inside so I have a template this is another one um, so I just wanted a template that's uh, the, the the length doesn't matter the width doesn't matter of the template so I am going to I've measured where I want to poke my holes so it's right in the middle and then an inch from the top and an inch from the bottom so now I'm going to poke my holes into the spine I'm going to put that in the middle so I have my um, template the same uh, height as my signature so it's not quite as uh, as high or you know it's it's a little bit shorter than the actual spine as you will see so I just position it in the middle I'll leave a little bit of space up the top a little bit down the bottom and then now I'm just going to poke my holes into the spine. One, two, three. Okay, that's done. And now before I poke the holes into this, um, into my signatures, I want to align the pages just the way I want them to sit when I actually do the binding so because they're all different sizes I just want to rearrange them a little bit and I don't I want to sort of have the shorter pages down the bottom and up the top so that the middle isn't too bulky I'll have this one in the middle and for, for the shorter ones you want it to be either right in the middle or at the top or at the bottom so that the when you're sewing it in when you're binding you want the needle to go through you don't want it to be sort of here in between where the needle's going to go through which is what I've done for one of the journals want to put my pocket in the middle 
I like everything to be, you know, somewhat aligned. Like I like the grungy, messy look, but I still want it. It's kind of like, you know, putting on natural makeup. You still have to take care how you apply it so that it looks like you didn't, you know, try at all. That's kind of what I'm doing with this. You know, it's messy, it's grungy, but I put quite a bit of thought into it, I guess. Okay, so now I have aligned, I've popped my template into the middle and I'm going to poke the holes. and to the binding so I'm just using um, embroidery floss I think it's called and I'm starting from the inside I'll just move this away and here we go binding time I didn't clip my signature I probably should have so that my pages don't move and they've already moved so I just kind of try to find everything again go. so back in up the top and then find everything again if you clip in your signatures you won't have this problem but sometimes if I'm rushing I, I make things even harder for myself so okay so now to go back inside I tighten everything up I'm holding the inside thread I want to hold it tight and to the left and then hopefully I will just poke that I will just go straight through the middle usually it takes a little bit of hard work okay finally okay so before I tie my knot I just want to make sure that everything is okay make sure that all of my little pages are bound in yep perfect just double check this one is okay I think that looks good good top looks good yep I'm ready to tie the knot so I want to make it tight but not too tight if it's too tight then the uh, the pages don't sort of lay flat and if it's too loose they move around so just before tying the knot I check if it's you know if I'm happy with it and now I'm going to tie the knot here we go and just a little bow and then I mean you can you know um, decorate this part too add some little hearts at the end whatever okay so the binding is done our next step is embellishing so this is uh, again to let your own imagination run wild you can add stickers now you want to uh, fill all of the pockets that we've got add paper clips tags etc so I just wanted to show you you've already seen quite a bit of what I did but um, so here we go I've added a, just a little pocket here and a journaling spot I've added a little bit of this um, ruffle, uh, ruffle, paper ruffle. I just had it in my hand. Here we go. So I'm gonna. This is. I have a tutorial on, on making uh, paper ruffle rolls. So I will link that down below as well. But I just cut off a little bit of my paper ruffle and then glue it down onto the page. Um, so I've done that. And then here I've just clipped in a little 
like a little journaling spot I guess which is just a bit of scrapbook paper with a little vintage type photo here's a sticker and uh, in the pocket I've got some journaling spots I've got a little tag here that I added a bit of lace to and then here I really like this one all of the journals I've made little booklets um, so some of the booklets are you know a little bit larger than this one but I also have a tutorial on making little booklets I've just stapled you can see here and here so I'll leave that tutorial as well down below if you want to have a look and I think that's nearly I think that's it okay that's all that I did so I'm going to go and do that I'm going to fill up my pockets and then we'll do the tassel and then that's it all right I'll be right back Okay, so I just want to use, I've got my little box of little uh, book phrases that I like to cut out. So I will link that video down below as well. But here I'm just going to use this little simple word. It says elegant. So I've also just cut that out of the book and I'm going to stick it down here. Okay, so all of the little embellishing is done. Oh, I just need to put a little card in there. Okay, so everything that I wanted to do I have done. And now the final um, step will be, actually two final steps, we will move on to uh, adding the tag here and adding the tassel. So with the tag, I like to use, um, as you will see here, I like to use the same same paper for the tag and for what's on the other side but you don't need to do that so it's up to you really so um, I'm going to do the tag and then we will do the tassel okay so I have done my tag um, I used the same scrapbook paper that I did here and I actually lined it with just a little bit of um, cardstock just to make it sturdy so that it's it can slide in and out sort of easy from here I've also sewn around it just for extra character added um, a little ribbon up the top and stamped the key image and that's that so the next thing and the last thing before we can um, begin to admire the journal uh, is to add the tassel so let's do that this is how I do the tassel. I have got one of these. They are called a ribbon crimp. And I think when I type this into Google, these little things come up. They are jewelry findings. There are many, many different sizes and colors. And I got this off eBay a while ago, which is why I couldn't remember what they're called. But they are really really good for this sort of thing that we're about to do now so 
I have one of those. I have my bob pin. I also got this on eBay too. And I've chosen a couple of um, little bits and pieces that I want to use as my charm. So the way that I assemble it is, let's say I'm going to do this one first and I'll just lay them on top of each other and then I can cut cut them um, shorter once everything is um, crimped down I guess so this will just take a little bit of fiddling so I might speed this process up a little bit I hope this will work but I want to make sure that the crimp is catching on all of my fibers. Um, um, what are they called? Laces fibers. So I don't know, is it catching everything? Probably not the black one. Let's see. And I just crimp it down. And let's hope this is not a total fail. Crimp it down and then try and see if anything's coming out. No. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim down the ends just to make it a little bit of a shorter tassel. So this, this is going to unravel and I'm fine with that. I think that'll do and then I've got my bob pin I'm going to put this through first and then I will put it through here and then this should go in here, oh. go in here. Close the journal and that is it. The journal is complete. We have finished everything. We've done all of the steps. Um, let me know what you guys think about these journals. So you can have them, as I mentioned, the closure can go this way or this way. And these are all of my completed journals. I have six in total and I'm not sure what to do with them yet. So let me know what you think. If you like this, let me know if you make this and I will see you in my next video. Bye.